There's a roll. It's a lot easier at 3G's. Run this base, everyone. Yeah. Good to be back. I don't remember liftoff being quite that violent. <laughs> I do. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. When astronauts climb into the space shuttle before launch, they are thinking of many aspects of the liftoff and coming mission. That's why there is another astronaut on hand to help the crew get strapped in and ready for the flight. Um, you got your mind on a lot of stuff when you're getting into the shuttle and uh, getting ready to launch into space and um, hooking up connections isn't always top of, your, top of your priority list. Following their basic astronaut training, Many astronauts are assigned to astronaut support personnel duties. An astronaut, you try and learn so many things so that when it first comes up, when you're a rookie launching, uh, you know what to expect. And there are only a few jobs that really teach you what to expect. And one of them is to be uh, working here at the Cape, the Kennedy Space Center, as an astronaut support personnel. They are known then as ASPs, or Cape Crusaders, as they work at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. They are also called Sea Squareds. Uh, working at the Cape, Cape Crusader, C squared, whatever you want to call it. And I learned so much about how the vehicles get ready, about the attitude of the people at KSC, and about what it is to be one of the crew members getting in and out of the vehicle. It's just a great job to have as, as a new astronaut. The ASS work with the closeout crew, a handful of technicians who oversee the pre-launch preparations, and also help get the crew in place. Before the crew arrives at the launch pad, the closeout crew sets the switches to launch positions and readies the seats for the mission's astronauts. It's a, a very well-polished process. The, uh, the closeout crew up in the white room really know their job. They're expert and they see us astronauts kind of roll through. So they take good care of us. They make sure we don't miss a step. Uh, and you as the astronaut support personnel, um, you're helping with that process, but really those guys have the responsibility. You get in and you make sure things are good and you make sure none of the switches are bumped and you take care of the things that you're responsible for. But The work is unusual because the space shuttle is standing on its tail, so the crew compartment is tilted and the seats that would normally be on the floor appear to be hung on the wall. This means the ASP, technicians and astronauts have to step carefully and literally climb into their seats, throwing their legs up over their heads to get into position. Uh, we pretty much say we just lay there and they do all the work for you. Because if you try to help, you actually hinder them. It's one of those type of situations. Astronauts have long supported their peers leading up to launch. More than 50 years ago, astronaut John Glenn helped Alan Shepard get inside the small Mercury capsule before the launch on May 5, 1961, that would make Shepard the first American in space. Astronaut Doug Hurley led the AST crew that helped the STS-107 crew strap in before the launch of Columbia in January 2003. When that crew was lost to an accident during re-entry, Hurley said he thought a lot about seeing them for the last time on the launch pad. Obviously, it was hard on the entire country and on the astronaut corps, but to lose seven people, you know, that you're close to. Uh, and then it kind of makes you, you know, dig deep and look down inside yourself and, 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 and ask, ask if, you, if this is really what you want to do and if it's worth it and if it's the right thing. And, you know, I was convinced it was, uh, but it still, it was very, it was a very tough few years to get through that, that the aftermath of the accident. When the crew of Discovery boarded the spacecraft for the return to flight mission, STS-114, fellow astronauts were at their side to strap them into their seats. Early work with the second return to flight mission, STS-121, as the ASP. Along with the personal help from the ASP comes a generous dose of technical expertise. Um, there are numerous communication checks with uh, the flight director in Houston, with the uh, OTC and NTD here at the Cape. Um, and they all have names, and you can never remember who it is. And it's wonderful to have the C squareds and strap in crew there leaning right over you in your face saying, Your OTC's name is such and such. You're going to tell them this at this time. <laughs> and so it's, uh, it's really a great help to have uh, them walking you through this step by step on a day when you're really trying to think about other things. Other aspects of the work involve simple camaraderie. Uh, but it's a fantastic thing, and 
and they ask the person who puts you in, the one actually t uh, you know, bu buttons you up and tightens up all, this, all the belts, uh, is usually a friend of yours too. So it's kind of nice to have that face as a last face as they go out the door and close the hatch, that's, that's what you see. As they work on the precision steps that go with getting their crew ready to launch, the apps know they will get a chance to climb in for a space flight themselves. It's really nice when then it's your turn to be wearing the pumpkin suit and standing there and having those guys joke with you as they uh, put all the harness and everything on and have yourself basically uh, bolted into the vehicle to get ready for launch. The ASPs and technicians know how important their work is to a successful launch day, though it is part of the precise choreography involving specialists, technicians, and engineers from across many fields. It's just one more link in an endless chain of counting on the expertise of so many people that, that allows a crew and a shuttle to launch. Houston, uh, that's beautiful. This has got to be one of the most proud moments of my life, I guarantee you.